So today's talk is Maxwell did not predict special relativity. First I want to go to a typical thing that believers in Einstein's relativity say. Got Brian Cox at this place, um, Einstein's relativity at address. So we go to that and here he is. We can play that. And I wanted to just talk a couple of minutes about relativity because it's a beautiful piece of science. And it's very um, sort of important at the moment because there was a beautiful experiment done about two weeks ago now. The results were um, announced, which confirmed for the first time with very, 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 very high precision, so the highest precision confirmation we've ever had, that Einstein was not wrong. Right? His, his theory of gravity stood the test. So when they say that sort of thing, uh, about a new experiment, we, we end up thinking, we in the distant movement think, oh, they're deluded again. They've sort of like made lots of claims like that. We don't, we don't trust them anymore. Uh, let's see. His theory of gravity stood the test of the most precise experiment we've ever been able to do. And I wanted to just show you a little bit about the results of that experiment. They were reported only two weeks ago. It was an experiment that was actually thought of back in the 1960s. So some of these scientists have been working for their whole careers, 50 years, and getting these results out. But relativity first. There's a very beautiful and easy way of describing what it is. Uh, here's Albert Einstein. Einstein was a genius because he thought very simply, often in pitch. Oh, well, they're calling Einstein genius because he uh, sort of thought simply about things. But we in distant movement think, well, he's, he's being stupid. They, 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 they think he's being clever and a genius by saying what he's saying, so it's a difference. I was a genius because he thought very simply, often in pictures, about how the world works. And what fascinated him back in the early 20th century, so in 1905 or so, was a result from uh, a Scottish physicist called James Clark, Clark Maxwell, who predicted, although he didn't know it really at the time, but he predicted that light... He predicted, but they didn't really know it at the time. It's sort of like ugh, they're trying to retrospect a prediction from Maxwell. I mean, they say it's going to, so say, agree with Einstein's relativity, so... ...really at the time. But he predicted that light travels at the same speed, no matter how you look at it. So it's a bit of an odd thing to predict that. Essentially, what I'm saying is if I fly to that spotlight now at the speed of light, or let's say 75% the speed of light, I go flying towards that light, the light will hit me in the face at the speed of light. Not twice the speed of light, or 1.75 times the speed of light, but the speed of light. It's a very odd thing to predict. But that came out of the theoretical physics of the 19th century from experiments on electricity and magnetism. Einstein was the first person to take that genuinely seriously and say, what does it imply? What, what, what happens if I say nature does work like that? So no matter how I move relative to you, we all agree on the speed of light. Well, he, he came up with a beautiful so-called thought so experiment to work. This is, they're going to go into the thought, this is thought experiment. But what they're tr he's trying to say is from Maxwell you get to special relativity and you've got some sort of prediction from Maxwell leading to special relativity. It's, so what he's saying is incorrect or rather it's misleading. So I want to refer you to this person, uh, Cynthia Whitney. Cynthia, Cynthia Whitney, uh, physicist, physicist, and she's, she was the editor of a journal for us students called uh, Galilean Electrodynamics. And okay, she's, she's a distant physicist, uh, and you don't get many lady distant physicists. So, that's that. 
and I want you won't refer to her talk about uh, Maxwell theory, Galileo relative t, and it's at uh, this address here. Should have copied it down. Copy, paste. Yeah. So it's there. So her talk is that place. So we go to the talk now. I've got to put the sound up quite a bit because it's a bit quiet. So go to this. Go back to the beginning. So this is the talk by Cynthia Whitney on Maxwell theory and Galileo, Galileo and relativity. I think I should tell you what. Uh, Galileo relativity is first. And, uh, this is this is from Wikipedia. Gives you a rough idea what Galileo relativity is. Galileo relativity or Galileo invariance states that the laws of motion are the same in all inertial frames. And Galileo first described this principle in 1632, and this is the original uh, relativity theory until Einstein replaced it and Einstein's relativity theory is special relativity theory is based upon the maths of what is called uh, Lorentz transformations in physics the Lorentz transformations is named after the Dutch physicist Lorentz it was a result of attempts by Lorentz and others to explain how the speed of light was observed to be independent of the reference frame and to understand the symmetries of the laws of electromagnetism. Uh, the Lorentz transformation is in accordance with special relativity but was derived before special relativity. So really Einstein is supposed to have uh, derived uh, the Lorentz transformations as the maths for his special relativity. So this is the difference. You have Galileo relativity and then you have special relativity based on using Lorentz transformations as its maths. So clarify that point. I think so now we're going to get on to Maxwell theory and Galileo Galileo relativity, a talk by Cynthia Whitney. Cynthia Whitney is referring to is she's looked at the mathematics and it's unfortunate that people keep getting in the way of this video and the sound's not too good but she's pointing out that she's investigated the mathematics and yes Lorentz transformations uh, do work with uh, Maxwell's equations and this is the Lorentz equations Maxwell uh, Lorentz equations, transformations, that works with Maxwell's equations, yes. But we now pick it up from that bit again. You find out that, yes, it's true that they are invariant under Lorentz transformations, but it is also true that they are invariant under practically anything else. So it's also true that it's practically invariant under anything else. So Maxwell's equations are invariant under Lorentz transformations and that means that it works under Lorentz transformations but it's practically true that it works under anything else as well. Let's pick it up again. It's also true that they are invariant under practically anything else and they are in particular invariant under Galilean transformations. There we go, it's invariant under Galileo uh, transformations, so that's Galileo relativity, so Maxwell's theory is maths, 
is um, works with Galileo relativity so there's no real point going to special relativity Maxwell's theory his math still works with Galileo so what is this prediction uh, go back to uh, Brian Cox he's talking about a prediction from Maxwell which gives you special relativity and it's that's, that's not really correct he's talking about the speed of light being constant coming out of Maxwell's theory which would be uh, saying that it's giving you special relativity uh, with the Lorentz transformations but that's not correct Galileo's relativity still works pick that back up again and in particular invariant under Galilean transformations. So this perceived dichotomy that people face about Newtonian mechanics and Galilean transformations on the one hand, and Maxwell's equations and Lorentz transformations on the other hand, is entirely and completely not real. So there you go. It's not real. It's, it's one of the things that the people who believe in Einstein's relativity would say. They would say that there's on one hand there's Newton, Newtonian physics, on the other hand there's Maxwell's equations and an actual fact both can combine together under what is called Galileo relativity. Galileo relativity. Maxwell's equations do work under Galileo relativity and hence work under Newtonian physics and so trying to make out there's a difference between the two, th two two things is false. So you pick that up again. And large transformations on the other hand is entirely and completely not real. It's, it's not true that there was a mandate at that time to go off on the track that we went on. And so it's not true that there's a mandate to go for special relativity. So whatever um, Einstein Einstein believers such as Brian Cox is saying is false. It's, there's no mandate to go from what Maxwell is saying to special relativity. So this supposed prediction from Maxwell is completely false. So I'll pick that up again. At that time to go off on the track that we went on. So people believed at that point in time certain things that were not factually correct. They made decisions on that basis. Right, so we're going to back in the time of Einstein in the 1900s, uh, people were believing things which were not factually correct. And so presumably Einstein is working on that sort of thing. So the idea of saying that Maxwell leads to special relativity uh, is just false. So it's based upon things that were wrong. They made decisions on that basis. Those decisions have brought us to the point that we're at now. And the whole thing was completely unnecessary. <laughs> so, so, completely unnecessary. So, going the way that Einstein went was completely unnecessary. And the whole thing was completely unnecessary. <laughs> so, from that so she's looking at the maths and this is the maths from one person called Jackson about uh, the ma relevant maths of uh, Maxwell's equations are all sorts of assertions in every case, but you can look into this effect that the Maxwell's equations fail in regard to Galilean transformation. And so I re-examined some of these that I found in the textbooks, and in every case I could find some little quirk in the argument that made it completely bogus. So the first one... So, so she's saying here that people who are making a claim about Maxwell's equations uh, uh, leading to uh, special relativity and so forth, when she looks into their claims she finds it's wrong. They look, go into their maths and find that they made some mistake. Uh, 
and I suppose this Jackson is what it's called. The fact that the Maxwell's equations fail in regard to Galilean transformation. And so I re examined some of these that I found in the textbooks, and in every case I would find some little quirk in the argument. So, Galileo's relativity still works with Maxwell's equations, and the people who've been claiming that it doesn't. When you look into their claims, you find that it's false. They, they've made some mistake. And so Maxwell's equations don't necessarily lead to uh, special relativity with its Lorentz transformations. In every case, I would find some little quirk in the argument that made it completely bogus. So the first one I looked at was Jackson, and we can move on. And looks at some more of them. Phipps has dealt with this problem too, and he's one of our honorees this year. And we've had a discussion about this issue, and I do disagree with him uh, because he did make his analysis without benefit of tensor analysis, and so had a more microscopic view of the problem and didn't see all the parts at the same time. And so, so he he was wrong as well, Philippa. I guess I say. We're now getting on to the maths, and this is the, the equations you come up with for the transformations. Uh, when you're dealing with electromagnetic fields. I didn't see all the parts at the same time. And here I made my attempt to uh, really look at the problem from the point of view of tensor analysis, as made explicit by writing down actual matrices that implement the multiplications that would go in uh, if carrying out a tensor analysis of the problem. So I looked at a particular case, and I looked at what it would be in the case of Lorentz transformation, and we'll move on and look at the same problem from the point of view of a Galilean transformation. Now, you can see that there, different transformation matrices, but of course the form of the matrices are the, the form of the whole equation is the same, and it's a matrix multiplication to, to effectuate the transformation. Now the kinds of things that you want to do the transformations are in an analysis of Maxwell's equations include the field matrices, which I display there, and the uh, source vector, which I display at the bottom of the page. And here we have the equations in matrix form. And so the question is, when you write them this way and you apply the transformations, what happens? So let's move on. Here we carry out the field transformations and the source transformations. Um, fills the page, but there's nothing hard about that. It's just a bunch of multiplies that are kept track of by the matrix notation. Keep going. And here we have the Maxwell's equations. And so um, we just plug into the transformations and we find out what I can't quite see there. But we come to the conclusion that <laughs> when you multiply all those matrices together, a whole bunch of interior matrix products collapse to a new matrices. And the consequence of that is that the overall equations are, in fact, form invariant under these. Uh, Galilean transformations, just as they were under Lorentz transformations. So, obeying, say, a form of variant under Galilean transformations, same as it under Lorentz transformations. So, she's saying that Galileo relativity works for uh, Maxwell's equations, uh, same as uh, Lorentz transformations works for Lorentz uh, for, for Maxwell's equations. If I can make the picture larger, let's see what it says. Uh, Maxwell's this is the conclusions. Maxwell's equations are manifestly invariant uh, under Galilean coordinate transformation, just as they are under Lorentz transformation. Uh, like the Jackson argument, the Phillips argument also goes away. So basically, these people are arguing. Uh, for special relativity coming out from Maxwell's equations, 
they're false, they've made mistakes. There's no mathematical support what's, what, whatever for the idea that Maxwell's equations are compatible, inc are incompatible with Galilean coordinate transformations. So what she's saying there, Maxwell's equations works for Galileo relativity. The truth apparently is this. Maxwell's equations are simply indifferent about coordinate transformations. So Maxwell's equations are no support whatever for Lorentz transformations and Einstein's relativity in in uh, in favour of any uh, other c candidate theory. So Lorentz Maxwell's equations don't give support for special relativity and other theories can actually use Maxwell's equations and the main one we're talking about is Newtonian physics which is using Galileo relativity so there it is again Galileo relativity that still works with Maxwell's uh, equations so we, when we distance actually look at these claims from the mainstream they're, they're just making thing they're making false claims when they're talking about Maxwell predicting uh, Einstein's theory no that's just false it's, it's just based on their mistakes and as a matter of fact they're forming very other anything you can imagine to do those are numbers that only two candidates that you're allowed to investigate in the course of having this paper on the web in advance of the conference, uh, Bob Kine, who's going to be on our screen later in the week during the Sinox celebrations, contacted me. He's a very fine mathematician, uh, very deep into topology, and he had been aware of this fact many years ahead of me. I'm certainly not the first to discover this. So she's saying she's not the first to discover this. Others have already discovered this as well. So he pointed out to me where he had written this down uh, in one of the chapters of one of his many books. Uh, and I think that probably most apologists would understand that this is the case, that Maxwell's equations are simply invariant to whatever you want to do as a coordinate transformation. They're just completely indifferent on this issue. Maxwell did not care about coordinate transformations. He never looked into that. He was happy enough to understand science within the confines of his own life, the laboratory, and he really didn't involve himself in the issue about what would the same experiment look like if it were viewed from somebody going by on the train or anything like that. Um, he didn't care. If his equations don't care. We shouldn't care. We are at liberty to consider any kind of coordinate transformations that we find to be physically meaningful. And my personal opinion is that the old-fashioned Galilean ones are, in fact, the ones that are most meaningful for physics. So she's saying the Galileo uh, equations are the ones that are most mean, meaningful in, in her point of view. Physics, and so that's where I am today. <laughs> and it, um, it's such an ironic tale that the uh, wrong decision that was made caused us to develop the mathematical techniques that we would need to see where. So she's saying the wrong decision was made i.e. the wrong decision was made by Einstein and that is Einstein's followers they, they made a wrong decision when they looked at Maxwell's equation and it doesn't actually necessarily lead to special relativity the techniques that we would need to see where we messed up that's my talk so it's best to uh, look at Go to this site and look at what more of the video if you like and the other part to it and she's also I think, got papers on this. So her paper she's referring to, this paper revisits the relationship between Maxwell's electromagnetic theory and coordinate transformations that can be implemented via tensors. Tensors are sort of the mathematical thing used by Einstein and his followers. It is well known that under Lorentz transformation Maxwell's equations are form invariant, although of course not invariant in numerical values except for a few one-dimensional constructs. 
the fact means that Maxwell's electromagnetic theory fits well with Einstein's special relativity theory. So admitting that, yep, it fits. This paper shows that the situation is almost the same under Galilean transformations and possibly other plausible transformations that have been considered in the future. So it still works with Galileo's relativity. The only difference is that some constructs are that are number invariant under Lorentz transformations become only form invariant under Galilean transformation. Thus, the issue of form invariance for Maxwell's equations is not a strong indicator in favour of any particular kind of tr coordinate transformation. That fact means Maxwell's electromagnetic theory fits well with just about any reasonable variant of uh, special relativity. So, it's not ex exclusive to special relativity. Maxwell's theory uh, and his maths is not exclusive to special relativity. You can get the maths to fit to uh, Maxwell's equations, but you can other do other maths as well. So if we go back to uh, Brian Cox. He wants to make this prediction uh, coming from Maxwell as leading to special relativity, and it's just bogus. It doesn't. There's no such thing. I get his words on it. Come back to get his words on this. Albert Einstein. Einstein was a genius because he thought very simply, often in pictures, about how the world works. And what fascinated him back in the early 20th century, so in 1905 or so, was a result from a Scottish physicist called James Clark Maxwell, who predicted, although he didn't know it really at the time, but he predicted that light travels at the same speed no matter how you look at it. So and that would lead to the Lorentz transformations. Speed, no matter how you look at it. So it's a bit of an odd thing to predict that. Essentially, what I'm saying is if I fly to that spot... So that is supposed to be the prediction for Maxwell, and it's not there. It's just not there. When you go to all the trouble of actually looking into the maths, it's just not there. When we have people in our distant movement actually look into the maths, you finding that people like Professor Brian Cox are making false claims about Maxwell. It does not lead to what they're saying. Uh, so, if we can, this bloke, I'll go back to this bloke, the physics heretic, he says interesting. Uh, Every bad volition needs a good heretic. I'm sure you're thinking, wait a second, physics isn't a religion. We all wish that were true. But unfortunately, mainstream physics has taken on much of the character of a religion, such as promoting non-scientific principles and spreading its truth as dogma. Physics has become schizophrenic as science fiction frequently is passed off as science. So... We have an example here now with uh, Professor Brian Cox. He's talking about a supposed prediction from Maxwell, and it's actually false. And it's become sort of like part of their religion to believe it. If we can now, I think I've got an explanation for why this is like this. If we go to this person, his website, this is by... Uh, He's got his name. I've got to go to the bottom, I think, get his name. Uh, maybe it's the top. Uh, right, so this person is, here we go. So, Einstein's theory of relativity, perpetual motion, and Ven Vendanda. Critical study of Einstein's theory of relativity and his high priesthood of physics that has kept cult of relativists hypnotized and the progress of physics stored for a century. So this is a person saying similar about uh, the relativity people have having now sort of a religious cult. And this is by Dr. Uh, Mendaria. So if we go to a more specific thing which he's talking about down here. So Einstein, 
he's talking about the incomprehensibility of the theory of relativity. And Einstein's given a quote here, if I had only known I had been a locksmith. And so that's a quote from Einstein, that's presumably when he's finding the theory incomprehensible. Uh, and then he says, another quote from Einstein, only thing, two things are infinite, the universe and human stupidity. And I'm not sure about the former. That's by Einstein. Another quote by him. Do, do not worry about your difficulties in mathematics. I assure you mine are still greater. So he's sort of like admitting he's bad at maths. So what do you really expect for a theory of physics coming from somebody who's bad for maths? And then he also says, since the mathematicians have invaded the theory of relativity, I do not understand it myself anymore. It's a quote by Einstein. So he's admitting he doesn't understand the theory of relativity. So the theory of relativity comes from Einstein and he's admitting to us he doesn't understand it. So if he doesn't understand it, then who does? Particularly the people who come after him don't understand it either. So this is what Dr. Uh, who I mentioned earlier has to say. Nowadays, for a scholar trained in physics, there seems to be two ways to impress academia or the media. He may talk about the theory of relativity and rhapsodise it, or talk about impossibility of perpetual motion and free energy, and take pleasure in ridiculing the inventor. He often does so with, without the investigation of the facts, and on the very account of his own ignorance. Today, parrot professors cheer up a lot about the theory of relativity without any questioning with the pride that they know no theory of relativity well along with all the manifestations across the universe and some of them may even think they that they are now in a position to help even Einstein if he had problem in the understanding of relativity but but they must know that even some physicists of the first rank found it very difficult to set relativity right away when it was launched by Einstein many eminent physicists found it even totally false and this is what uh, Dr. Men, uh, Men Menuel is saying so he's pointing out he's trying to point out that these what they're saying about perpetual motion machines of free energy uh, by these physics people is wrong and really I think the terminology is wrong to talk about perpetual motion I would change the meaning of that a bit uh, it's all to do with uh, energy uh, energy losses and things um, but on to this point about what he's saying about these people professors of relativity they don't really understand what they're talking about uh, Einstein admits he didn't understand what he was talking about and these people who come after him are finding it pleasurable to talk about a theory which not many people understand and it's incomprehensible really they're just deluding themselves that they think they can understand relativity and many eminent physicists found it totally false and that was when Einstein proposed his theory physicists were saying it's false and they were saying that at the time when Einstein gave the theory and many physicists today would still say it's false many people looking at Einstein's relativity you would say it's false. We have examples in the distant movement of people still saying Einstein's relativity is false and they're just hiding behind ignorance. And so people like Professor Brian Cox will say things that are false. He can talk about Maxwell as leading to special relativity and that is false. It's just a false claim. It's all based on not really understanding what he's talking about. And then we get back to that, and that's why the f this heretic his site is pointing out that physics is now like a religion. Physics is now coming like a religion, all because it's built upon the, the incomprehensibility of what Einstein was talking about. Uh, if I'd carried on with the, le if I carried on with the uh, talk that uh, Professor Cox was given, he would still he would make other claims and we would disagree with those as well. But I'm pointing out his claim about Maxwell is false, or at least badly worded. So when when it comes to Einstein, 
that I pointed out in this video, Einstein's cuckoo process, what happens is Einstein suddenly does crazy things. When he's doing his building up his special relativity, it suddenly just goes all crazy and it's nonsense. And so what do you expect to get from that is then just claims by people like Professor Cox saying crazy things are just not true. Go down next one. So, I had, I had it, well, yeah, it goes on. So, I pointed out in, in this lecture, it's a professor, uh, Roger Ryden, who's looked at the maths of general relativity and come to the conclusion it's nonsense. And so, when you're trying to fit experiments and observations to a theory that's nonsense, it's just nonsense. And so it's nonsense in general relativity, and it's still nonsense in special relativity. They're just going to make false claims. When we actually check out what they're saying, it is false. You've got people like Cynthia, who's going to check, check what their claims are, and finds it's false. Maxwell does not lead to uh, special relativity. Maxwell does not predict it. There's no prediction. Brian Cox might want to believe that, but there's no prediction from Maxwell. So, the conclusion. The claim by Einstein believers about Maxwell's theory, maths, is incorrect. They make numerous false claims. It takes a great deal of effort to check out their claims. Then we find, out them, find, find them to be false. So they're making claims that are false. And I've given another example of Professor Ryden checking out their claims about general relativity. So, the Einstein believers have a mountain of false claims. That's all they have. They have made claim upon claim and it's false. And we, we can trace that back to Einstein did not know what he was talking about. And I think this has been built upon by his followers. So he didn't know what he's talking about and his followers don't know what they're talking about. Many people will admit to not being able to understand Einstein's relativity. There are some who claim to understand Einstein's relativity, but when you check out their claims, they are false. That's us the distance when we check what they're saying. All they do is build upon their misunderstandings. Right. Probably, probably Professor Brian Cox is just speaking back to us like a parrot repeating what he has been taught to believe and now he says this to his students so they can also repeat it back like a parrot but in, but in reality their claims do not make sense you check what their claims are and when we check them we go to all the effort of checking them they don't make any sense whatsoever they're just false so this is the strong lie in the distant movement we say the physics mainstream are just talking nonsense the mainstream have been talking nonsense now for many decades and now it's long overdue that they stopped. They're just making false claims. So that's my conclusion. A mountain of nonsense coming out from the mainstream. He thinks he's being clever, saying, oh, Mac Maxwell made a prediction. No such thing. He's presumably been told that, and he's believed it, and he's repeating it back like a parrot. There's no such thing. No such thing. Just wrong. When you think it through, when you when you think it through, you're going to have a dis be a critical look at Einstein's relativity, as like what what most of us distant people are. We are critical. We look at it, and you look at it, and you find no claims like that are just false made a false claim and no matter how many other people he manages to get to repeat that false claim it's still false just got lots of following people people following false claims such as that so that's the end thank you